Amen. 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 I'm going to take you through a wonderful, enjoyable study in the Bible. And this study is going to strengthen your life and get you encouraged. Amen. It's going to deliver you from the challenges the devil has raised against your life. Amen. 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 Now let's go before the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for bringing your children together and strengthening them. Thank you because, Lord, I am happy for I know that Holiness Revival Movement is blessed by you, raised up by you, to take people to heaven. I thank you for guiding us into what we should say, what we should teach, what we should preach. And I thank you because you're working in the hearts of the people to believe, to act out what they hear. I'm praying that God, all those who are in the verge of the fall because of temptations, by, the, by virtue of this word that you're sending to them, shall be delivered in Jesus' name. And beside the world shall give pleasure to us, give joy and delight. Thank you. Make your children victorious over the devil and over temptations. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I'm, I'm talking to you on the worship of world set up image. The worship of world set up image. The world has set up image. Does set up image will set up image for worship. The worship of world set up image. And our text is uh, the book of Daniel, chapter 3, verse 1 to verse 30. It centers on Nebuchadnezzar and the three Hebrew children. These are the main characters in this chapter. The story goes thus. Daniel chapter 3, from verse 1. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold, whose height was three score cubits, and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura, in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princes, the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. This is the culmination of human glory, the height of human pride. Yes, the size of human achievement, King Nebuchadnezzar. Remember I was studying in the Bible study quite some months ago about King Nebuchadnezzar the highest glory of the natural man. You check it up and listen to it again. Because King Nebuchadnezzar was actually a great man, an intelligent man, a great king, a man with 
refined mind. A man that thought he had all that nature, nature could give, could achieve, could build, could offer. And now he had come to the peak of man, of manliness, of manhood, that he made himself God to be worshipped. And so he set up an image, constructed an image of gold. And then invited the rulers, the authorities of his kingdom to come together. Whether he got them by surprise or he had instructed them what was going to follow in their gathering. The Bible tells us, I read from verse 3, then the princes and the governors and the captains and judges and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together onto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Dain and Herald cried aloud, to you it is commanded all people, nations, and languages that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, herb, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And you can see that whether these people were taken by surprise or had been prepared before this time, a voice came up while they were standing before that image. Listen, everybody. This message is to be heard by all of you and practiced, attended to, that at any moment you hear the sound of music, the flute, and all kinds of music, you should bow down where you are standing and worship the golden image that is before you, given all glory, which means human beings of all glory, of all attainment, of all achievement, of all intelligence, submit to one that is superior to you on earth he is King Nebuchadnezzar. Then it is not a willful submission. It is compulsory submission. See the voice, the herald, Again, continue, a six. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth shall the same, hour, the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. He carried the sentence of death. Whoever felt he was higher than the book of Nezah, he suffered himself. He must die in that same hour. For no man on earth is higher. No man on earth. I have it in mind, God helping me as you pray with me, to bring out a book that compares the highest height of the natural man compared to the highest height of the godly man. Because when we look at Daniel, great wisdom, godliness, intelligence, superior to that of Nebuchadnezzar, dwelt in this same man, Daniel. That when Daniel came and spoke to Nebuchadnezzar, he bowed down and worshiped Daniel to show that there is superiority in the man of God above the natural man. 
there is superiority in the prophet of Christ, of God above the presidents of the world. The best man bowed before the best man of God. Praise the Lord. If you Hallelujah. follow the word of God, you have the highest glory, better than any glory the world can offer to natural man. Be, be a president, be a king, be a queen, be anything. The glory God gives to the man he has chosen is superior. Now we go on. Verse 7. Therefore, at that time, when all the people had the sound of the cornet, flute, herb, sackbird, psaltery, and all kinds of music, music, all the people, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. The image itself would have looked very fantastic, great and mysterious. Because intelligence met it, the intelligence of King Nebuchadnezzar. It directed those that met it. So it looked great. So the nations and tribes and languages surrendered and said, we have not found in uh, among us any man that is equal to you, Nebuchadnezzar. They all bowed. They all surrendered. Yes. Verse 8. Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. They spake and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live, for, live forever. Thank God. <laughs> there were a people called the Jews. Thank God for calling Abraham and raising up a race by him to be peculiar, a peculiar people, a royal priesthood <laughs> that knew no man. These are the children of God. They are superior beings. They are higher than Nebuchadnezzar. Higher than him. They recognize not the, the glory of man because the glory of man faded away, fades away. Yes, the glory of man fades away. Yes. So they never bowed. All the Bukatnisa you have in your kingdom, a people whose who, a people whose life came from heaven, who possess not only the natural body of man, but the spiritual body of God. They are not human, all human, but they have God in them that make them children of the living God. Having a different spirit, different lifestyle, superior to the life of earth. The book of Nisa, they have to three in your kingdom. One of them, whatever happened, didn't come. He's the fourth one. In fact, the leader. His name is Daniel. What, you yourself, you know, that's why you didn't allow him to come to this meeting. Where is Daniel not here? You know Daniel will not bow. Where are his brothers? Where are his brothers? You only exempted Daniel because you know he will not bow. That, that will give you shame. You don't know that we're the same. We are the same. The same species. Children of Israel. Okay. Praise the Lord. So that's how it went. Yeah. Now. The people now accuse these three. Multitudes bow. Thousand, thousand. But only three never bow and they notice them. They didn't do it in a pretense. 
They didn't hide their identity and conviction. They didn't hide their own opposition. They did not hide their despite of man, Nebuchadnezzar. You will know what they said here that they didn't regard him. So see it now. Uh, the Chaldeans, Babylonians were going to report this threat to Nebuchadnezzar. And you will see the language of report to stir up in Nebuchadnezzar the strength of the natural man, the wrath of the natural man, fullness, to stir up Nebuchadnezzar the spirit of contest with the almighty God, man contesting with God. Devil was among, was in these people reporting these three people to bring up the power of man. That's why we should know that no man today can equal Nebuchadnezzar. No wrath of man today can equal the wrath of Nebuchadnezzar. He attained the highest wrath man could offer, but he fell, he fell from there. So don't fear the wrath of any king. They had their leader who died, who had the highest wrath. Don't fear the judgment of any king. They had their own brother who was the highest man and it fell from there. From there, every other, the graph starts falling down. The graph reached its peak, and from that time of Nebuchadnezzar, the graph is coming down. So what do we fear? Nothing. Now, the report went. Verse 9, and they spake and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Where is he now? Thou, O king, has made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the of the cornet, flute, herb, sagba, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, shall fall down and worship the, the golden image. And whoso falleth not down and worship it, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace, the voice of human worshippers. Voice of human worshippers. Dead men. Men that will inherit eternal hell. Human worshippers, promoting man above God. What makes the Bucanese different from them? He is body, soul, and spirit. They are body, soul, and spirit. He was born, they were born. He would die and they would die. Nebuchadnezzar was created by God and they were also created by God. What made them to now be worshiping Nebuchadnezzar? The same problem. You will ask me what made angels in heaven to be worshiping Satan? The same question. It's God that will answer this question. It's a surprising thing. When we go over there, we will receive the answer. We shall understand it better by and by. Now, it continues. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon. Shedra, Misha, and Abednego. This men, O king, have, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy, thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Three things was known, were known of these three men. One, they have not regarded Nebuchadnezzar in his pride, arrogancy, and backslide, and, and, and uh, what do we call it? and wickedness. They didn't regard him. 
in whose eyes a vile person is condemned. The character of the righteous, in whose eyes the sinner, wicked, rebellious, arrogant man has no regard. Has no regard. <laughs> we are worshiping, we are serving God, worshiping our God, doing everything among men. And we respect men because the Lord said we should respect, honor all men, honor the king. But let no man, because you honor him, come to affect you by way of your God. I'm talking to you women, that any man, because you're under him serving Jesus, I mean, serving your God and in secular, you are doing something also under, under him, should now come and be commanding you, that open up for me now, I am your leader. What do you mean? No regard to some wicked person. No regard, no respect. He might be like in the book of Nisa, threatening, I would terminate you. I will do this. I will do that. Forget those stories. If you have power to do it, do it. Let me see. If it happens, then it's God that is removing me from here. Not you. <laughs> These people have no regard for thee, number one. They serve not your gods, you, the idols you have been serving, even before you made this image. You don't serve them. And then number three, they did not bow down for this golden image. Thank you so much. What a, what, you, what, what a good report. Sometimes when people go to report you, it's God that wants to expose you. Amen? So don't have problem with anybody. These people are trying to implicate me. No, they are trying to promote you. They are trying to reveal that you are here. Are, where are people not knowing you? If special people are here and they are not recognized. <laughs> so they want to make you to be recognized. That's why they are going to carry your report. All things work together for good. To them that love God. To them who are the called according to his purpose. Yes, let's go. Let's go. Yes. Now, then Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury, the Bible used two words because one word could not contain all the anger of Nebuchadnezzar. Both rage and fury must come together to show, although they are, they are talking about the same thing, let them show the, the quantity of the thing. He reached his life, his heights. Rage and fury. But I've told you the graph reach is height under this man in this man's life. No man's anger today, hey, no man's fury today can equal that of Nebuchadnezzar. So be peaceful. Be peaceful. You can uh, you can contain any man. Is, is a general brother to Nebuchadnezzar. Any other woman is a younger sister. If Nebuchadnezzar could be hum humbled, you will humble every man. You will humble every woman. Wickedness will be humbled. Yes. So he said, Verse 13, then Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought this man before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have made. Now, if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, 
sakba, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hand? Now, there's a good thing here about Nebuchadnezzar. However bad a person is, there's a good thing in his life. I told you that this man is an intelligent man. This man, natural wisdom rested on him. This man, see, if it was another person, another king, immediately they bring, they, they brought such report to him. He would have just, maybe he would have just sent from there, carried them from there and throw them into the fiery furnace. He would be wrong. Nebuchadnezzar knew that if he did that, there will be injustice in his government. Because he knew so well that matters should be investigated clearly. He knew so well that there should be justice. And so every man should be listened to according to the law of fair hearing. I told you that Nebuchadnezzar was an intelligent man. Don't condemn a man until you have hurt him, whatever the report. In fact, whatever your anger, prove whether the thing is true. That's why he said, is it true? So that I won't just hear evil report and start condemning people. There's something to learn in the book of Lisa. If you learn it well, it will help your eternal life. Yes, it will help your service for God. Always investigate. Check up that report. Is this really true? Sometimes you set a committee and the thing is still not clear. Bring them to yourself. Hear it. You see? Because he knows what it means by just killing people in the house. He knows the implication. So now, he wanted to give these people second chance. Okay. Let it be that what I had was not true of you. Oh, let me prove it now. Let me prove it. I'm going to give another chance. I respect you so much that in fact, the whole multitude will be waiting for you for a second time, and they will blow that thing again. We'll be waiting for you. I respect you just for three people. We shall repeat the whole thing we have been doing. Chai. Then you can see something here. Satan is more interested in your corruption than in your debt, in your backsliding than in your debt. He is more interested in removing God from you than in removing your life from the earth. Take note of that. Because if he kills you, you're going to heaven. That is the main thing he doesn't want. That is, that, that is the place he came from. When must he send you there? Then what's the purpose of his anger? That's a chief nothing. That's a chief nothing. <laughs> That's a chief nothing. So he will want to cause you to backslide. If you backslide, you join his army. And you know where righteous people are. You will turn against the righteous and fight them. You are living among righteous people. You will frustrate them as an army of Satan, a soldier of Satan. 
So that's why don't rejoice that the devils are subject unto you, are treating you fine, fine, and fine. Rather rejoice that your names are written in heaven. That is the most important thing. Don't rejoice because that, de that devil man that is treating everybody anyhow is treating you with gentleness and is showing you some kindness and is giving you some things and is drawing you closer. That is, that is nothing. If he's doing that, but make sure your name is in the book of life. Otherwise, it's for your soul. It's for your soul. That's the tactics now. If you cannot beat them, join them. You want to fight. You are throwing stones. The stones are not touching anybody. Make peace and join them. Then you can even hold, it, hold them with your hand and drag them. Yes. So that is what we notice here. But then in verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answer and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. Nebuchadnezzar, we are not respecting you in this matter. In other matters, we respect you. But this is a matter of immorality. We will not respect you. This matter of signing the signature with you so that this thing should be done, this evil act should be done, we are not respecting you. This matter of corrupt money that you say I should make way for you, I should agree with you, I will not respect you. This matter, you are my father, and you are looking to me again for immorality. You are my father. Never, I will not regard you as a father. That's what God is teaching us. So, don't waste time to say you are showing us a favor. It's a deceitful favor. Favor for hell. Favor to remove us from our God. Don't waste time for that favor. Go, allow your anger to run. Release your anger to the fullness. We have God that is superior to you in power and in wisdom. And power and wisdom shall walk in this circumstance. Power, he is able to deliver us from your hand. Wisdom, he may not deliver us because he wants to take us to heaven. But whichever way, he is the one to decide and bought us for our good. No evil is inside. is able to deliver us from your hand. By his power or by his wisdom, it is the right way he has chosen to take us to, to paradise. Finish. We will not submit to human authority in iniquity. Then it continues.
But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Hey, do you know that Nebuchadnezzar was smiling when he was talking to them? He hid his anger. He was talking with smile. I'm telling you, that wicked man is that sure I said he's a good man. Putting a nice face upon him, his face, his deceitful face. Sheep, I mean, the Bible says wolf in sheep's clothing. He was smiling and joking. He hit his anger. All to destroy these young men. So, but when they answered like that, his face changed. Full anger manifested in his face. Now, then was Nebuchadnezzar, verse 19, full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should hit the furnace one seven times, more than it was want to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their horses, and their hearts and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flames of the fire slew those men, and took up, um, slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Mm. Get the story. The anger of Nebuchadnezzar was great. Full anger. He now, I think from the anger of Nebuchadnezzar, the higher, the higher anger is of demon. The, if demon look at you like this, you will wonder what you will offended them. What did you do that they are look, just to look at you like this? The anger is forever. The anger look like the sun that has been there before you were born. What did I do to you that you're looking at me like this? The anger is above the power of man. The anger of Satan, of demons. So that of Nebuchadnezzar is lower. That of Nebuchadnezzar is lower. But because man is made a little lower than the angels. But then I want to say something. Why? Some of you will ask the question. You know, I am under authority as a military officer. And when I am in war, or when we are uh, operating, the law of the military says, obey the last command. What your commander commands you, do without asking questions. So that many use it, to say, I was commanded to shoot at the man. And in our rule, we must do it. 
Otherwise, we die. Or otherwise, we'll be dismissed. Or otherwise, we'll be whatever, court martialed, whatever you. That's why I shot as I was commanded shoot. This means shoot and died. Why? The God expected them to exercise their senses in matters of unrighteousness. No commander has the right to command you to act it. For no commander is compared to your creator, who is a just God, a God of justice. When there is no sin in a man, there is no evil in a man, they command you to oppress him, say, no, I will not do it. Because you who are commanding me has a commander too. If you command and the commander superior to you command differently, commands differently, I will follow him because he will deal with you and deal with me. So because I want to leave, I will not obey your command. And the, one, the commander that is ahead of you will intercept. Whatever you think to do with me, he will intercept. So I will be safe. He will justify me. Do not do evil because you were instructed by your mother to do it. Otherwise, you would die in the judgment of God. The soul that sinned, he shall die. Do not do evil because you were commanded by your husband to do it. Or you were commanded by a superior to do it. Never. Never. You will be judged. The face-to-face -face judgment before Nebuchadnezzar was this mean. Their judgment was even greater. Nebuchadnezzar didn't die. He had a chance to come and repent, but this man had gone. Don't allow anybody to push you forward. You are thinking he may join you in hell. He may not. <laughs> he may repent after the whole thing. I say, God, I'm sorry. I didn't know. And go forgive him. You don't know God? Go forgive him. So, But verse 23. And these three men, Shedra, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? The fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. I want you to also take note of this. When you are in a place where they are taking decision, the decision of evil, show that you don't belong there. Otherwise, your silence means you belong. See me, Nebuchadnezzar here. He said, did we not? He's joining everybody that was there with him. <laughs> I'm telling you. Everybody that was there, who would say he was not part of the, the crime? Then why did he not talk? If you were not part of the crime, why did you not talk there? So Nebuchadnezzar counted all of them. You people join me. I'm not the only one that did this. We did it. So be careful always among people. When evil thing is coming up, to show that you are not part of them. Withdraw. So that they will not say you were dead when it was going on. No. Now, the answer. Then the Bukhadeza came. I'm uh, sorry. Verse 25. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, 
and they have no heart. And the form of the fork is like the Son of God. <laughs> Wonderful. How will Son of God have manifested himself? God will not manifest himself in cowards, fearful people, compromisers. How will God show his glory in your life? Never. You are not worth it. He will show forth his glory in the faithful. My heart shall, my eyes shall be upon the faithful, faithful in the land. God's eyes, as we're talking, as we're servicing, fellowshipping, the eyes of Jesus are on the faithful in the fellowship, in holiness movement. The faithful in the land. My eyes. But you, since you are not faithful, God will not reveal. Why will you why will you manifest yourself to, to us and not to the world? Judas, not Iscariot. Ask Jesus. He said, He that loveth me not keepeth not my word. He that loveth me not keepeth not my word. So, how will I go and manifest myself to my enemy? No. But see him now. The form of the fourth person was the Son of God. You want to see God? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see them. They shall see God. The committed, the holy. They shall see God. Then the Bukhatiza came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace. But he came carefully because some people have died. He, he knew how to, to come, came near, but not where he, the heat will walk on him. <laughs> if you don't learn, others will learn lesson through you. Others, after it has happened to you, others will learn their lessons through you. The Bukhanesa learned his lesson through the foolish the stubborn people that carried this, this righteous men to put into fire is when he saw that God slew them, he was careful. He, he knew how to behave well because the fire will not spare him. Fire doesn't know change. Only by wisdom and by understanding you will save yourself. So, then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth. And Abednego, and then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. They bound them and threw them into it, and they walked out of it. Hmm. Jesus Christ was uh, wrapped and put in the grave, and he walked out of it. The law will cause you to walk out of that cage the devil has put you inside. The law will break the court of devil over your life. You will come out free and victorious. Yeah. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Stand faithful. Stand true. We shall hear the testimony at last. Amen. Amen. I'm watching you. Amen. 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 Amen.
Amen. I, I told you, Nebuchadnezzar reached the height of man, of powers, wisdom, of the natural man. And see natural man contending with God. So you knew that they were there was the most high God, and you were challenging him. Who is that God? You man, stubborn, rebellious man. You knew of the praises of the most high God, and you disdain him as a who is that God? That will deliver you out of my hands. Thank God you repented and gave glory to God. Shade and Meshach and Abednego, servants of the Most High God. That man that is cursing our God, he shall come and worship him. Amen. Oh, you shall make him worship him in your life. Amen. That wicked man shall bow in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors, being gathered together, saw this man, upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was, and hear of their head singed. Neither were there, were there, neither were their courts changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. <clears throat> Can you see? These men that were surrounding the book of Nisa, great men. You know, sometimes you avoid great men. You think they will not believe. See what God led them to see and experience in their life. They saw the glory of the Lord. When he said, go, he has prepared the people. You just go and fish them out. Why are you avoiding people God has worked on in evangelism? Who told you that they will not believe? See a people, see what they have seen. See the experience God brought them across. They saw it. And you come to speak about that God, they will want to hear more. They are waiting for you. God has passed them through experience. Some in true dream, some true experience. Some in, 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 even by the occulting power, they went and saw power past power. And they say, hey, so there's another power. Higher. Yes. They are waiting for somebody that will come and tell them that power. When Simon, the sorcerer, saw another power, was he not looking for it? So they're waiting for you. Go and introduce them to the superior power. May the Lord anoint your ministry. Amen. May the, may the Lord encourage you to go for evangelism. Amen. May the Lord lead you to these people who have been made ready. Amen. 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 Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who had seen his, who has sent his angel. So this Nebuchadnezzar even knew that angels existed. These people knew about God, they just knew stubborn. Eh? So you knew angel was there. Stubborn man. May God humble them. Who has sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's world and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god? 
they have changed the king's word. In the word of the king, there's power. But the king's word can be changed by people who fear God. How can they change it? The power will not be there in the word of the king. The decree of that king shall not work. Then they have changed the word of the king. And that will happen when they are faithful, standing by their God. Whatever is the decree of the king, it can be changed by faithful people. Therefore, I make a, a, a decree that every people, nation, and language who speak anything amiss against the God of Shedra, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. How would Nebuchadnezzar have come at this except these people were ready to give their bodies as he said here? How would they except they were ready to give their lives? Except, except, except Stand for God and let God be known. Stand for God and let the people, the hidden, know him through you. So far to the end. Amen. And the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. The king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon, the matter has ended in promotion. The people that were to die were promoted. All that you have suffered, may it end up in your promotion. Amen. The pains you have gone through by persecution, suffering for this gospel, suffering because of truth, suffering because of your righteousness, may the God of heaven turn it to your promotion. Don't get to your glory. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, write, write down the following seven things I am giving you now. The, seven, the following seven things. Number one, the world is gradually moving to central worship of image. That image of Nebuchadnezzar, the world is building it up. The world is reproducing it to bring nations and languages to that worship, to worship that image. Number two, several kinds of penalties culminating in death sentence are following this world image worship. Several kinds of penalties culminating in death sentence are following this world image worship. It is, <laughs> I'm telling you, it is a commandment. It's a decree coming through your organization, your workplace, coming through man, coming
coming to the government a command to central worship of image. Number three, the citizens of the nation are ready without resistance to worship this image. In fact, they are worshiping it already. The citizens of the nation, the nations of the world are willing to do this worship, to bow down to this central image, central worship image. Yes without resistance is going to be global agreement. Global agreement. National agreement. International agreement among men of all language, languages and nations to power. Number four, this is and shall be a great temptation to Christians who worship God only. This is a great temptation to Christians who worship God only. This shall be a great temptation to Christians who worship God only. This is because this image worship is already going on in various degrees. And it's a great temptation to Christians. Who know that only God and the Lord Jesus Christ should be worshipped. And I am saying this image is in various degrees and it's coming, it's growing, greater ones. And then the final one shall come in the Antichrist. And so in the various grades, the post-temptation to you, brother, the post-temptation to you, my sister, in various respects. Hmm. Satan came to Jesus and said, see, all this is given unto me. Bow down and worship me. All. Then it shall be yours. Image worship. Then, number five, it is at this point, true worshipers shall be identified. It is at this point, true worshipers are identified. It is at this point, we knew that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were sincere worshipers of Jehovah. Yes, because the Bible says they that must worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. It is at this point that we shall know those that worship the God, not only by mouth, only, not by mouth only, but in spirit and in truth. They will not bow down to this image whatever percentage for their conviction in God to die or to live. The 
Bible says, so ye have not yet resisted unto sin, striving. Uh, ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. True worshippers will resist unto blood. Until they die. It's at this point we shall know them. But now, they are professors, Christian professors. Number six, it is at this time, it is at this point, the Lord of the church shall be revealed. The gods you saw shall be revealed. It is at this point of standing firm that the God of the church, the God of your life, Jesus, shall be revealed. Shall reveal himself to you and to the people. Shall be revealed by you by your circumstance to the people. And finally, it is at this point that Christianity, Christians, and the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be magnified, shall be promoted shall be spread to the ends of the earth. It is at the point of your standing firm that the God behind you shall be revealed and announced. And you promoted by both God and man. Go and meditate on these seven points. Overcome your temptations. The dollar image, overcome it. The hero image, overcome it. The national image, American image, overcome it. And promote Jesus. In Jesus' name. The grace of God be sufficient for you that you will overcome. Amen. 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 Which department? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Which ever department of life, whatever workplace, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. The strength of God be great upon your life. Amen. Glorified Amen. by God. In Jesus' name, I pray for you. Amen. 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 God be for the Lord. Ask for grace. Make promises. Tell God to help you. Promise God. You will stand. You will not embarrass him. Father, King of Glory. King of Glory. Lord, and in the 
Hurimo is a non denominational ministry given to the propagation of God's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, conferences, and the production and spread of holiness literature and materials. Pastor Paul Ricke has been mandated to raise up this great work as the international director, an anointed teacher of holiness with divine inspiration. He is the author of over 30 Christian books and many hundreds of recorded messages that can be found on the YouTube channel. Connect with us on YouTube and Facebook. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide Horimo is promoting biblical truth, righteousness, and holiness. Please join us every Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time with the Zoom meeting ID 425-964-7780 or every Monday at 10 p.m. Eastern Time ID 989-988-2681. To hear the undiluted word of God from Pastor Paul Ricca, the International Director of Horimo. The address of Horimo North America is 3776 Piney Mountain Road, Walnut Cove, North Carolina, 27052. You can telephone us on 336-251-4626 or email us at horimona at gmail.com. You can also visit the website at www.horimona.org. Welcome to Holiness Revival Movement, promoting holiness and righteousness worldwide.